Hey everybody, welcome to the Magic Weekly News Update for February 18th, 2018 on the Mana Lake. I'm John as always, and boy, some big news happened this week, so let's get started. Up first, you've already heard this. I don't really need to talk about it, but it happened last week. It definitely happened. Jace the Mind Sculptor and Bloodbraid Elf were unbanned in Modern. Now, Jace has always been on this ban list. It's never been legal until now. It's an extremely powerful card that can really define formats. That being said... Modern can definitely be a harsh place for tapping out on turn four. There's no force of wills kicking around. You, you, you can't protect Jace with a, you know, no mana up. A Jace on four is an unprotected Jace. It'll be interesting to see what happens in Modern. And, and while, of course, everyone is trying to play it now, the first MTGO Modern challenge with Jace being legal definitely had Jace show up, but not remotely at the OMG, the format is dead levels that people have predicted. And as far as the they only unbanned him to sell cards mentality. I don't buy it. I feel like everybody just forgot that Jace was just reprinted a year and a half ago in Eternal Masters. Also four and a half years ago in FTV 20. The conspiracy theory would have had more weight if they hadn't pretty recently reprinted Jace without a surprise on banning. Will it sell more packs? Of course. And remember, that's the reason Wizards of the Coast exists. It's their point as a business, is to sell their product. But the sole grand conspiracy reason behind them doing it, I don't buy it. Bloodbraid Elf, on the other hand, was legal for a while. It was banned about five years ago when Jund was extremely dominant. It brought that deck down a bit from dominance, um, but Bloodbraid Elf also suffers a little bit from the you're paying for and not just winning. Well, be careful kind of problem. It'll certainly have an impact as well, but I don't expect it to suddenly be a problem. And uh, uh, I think Jace will be a little bit more format defining than the Bloodbraid Elf will be. It'll certainly uh, be interesting to watch the next couple of months of modern events. So uh, let's see what happens here. These are uh, big, big, big unbannings, and I'm excited to see what happens. The other big news this week was a series of product announcements on Valentine's Day. Now, before we get into these, I want to address something I have to address basically every year. You don't have to buy every magic product that's released. If you can't afford it, if you don't want it, if it's not designed for you, you don't have to buy it. You can say no. You, you, you can just not buy things. And these products especially are aimed at a really varied amount of people, a very varied audience. Up first, Wizards announced that they're producing their own life tracker app. Why? Well, in order to have an official version of a popular magic digital accessory. Will it be good? I, I doubt it. Just like people don't often use the official Wizards branded sleeves in lieu of better alternatives, I expect this to be the same. Plus, nothing beats good old pen and paper anyways. I, I personally can't really stand Life Tracker apps. Now, one cool thing that the official Wizards app will have is a tournament function allowing you to run tournaments at home, giving you pairings and letting you enter results and stuff like that, which only a couple of other apps offer. And I've tried a couple and they're not the most user-friendly, at least the ones that I tried. Uh, if it works well and without a lot of hassle, that's probably going to be the big thing for me that makes me use that app. Uh, but we'll see how the app goes. Uh, again, it's not for me, but some people will enjoy it, and that's great, and they can enjoy it. I'm not going to demand that Wizards not do this because I personally am not going to use it. Signature spellbook Jace was announced as a spiritual successor to the From the Vault series. Each spellbook will be themed around a planeswalker and the spells that define who they are. Each will have one foil card and eight other cards that fit with the planeswalker's identity. They'll be 1999 MSRP and no cards have been announced. So it'll remain to be seen what exactly these are. They could be from the Vault spiritual successors in that they're sets of cards based around a theme and for 20 bucks you get some boring cards. Jace is Erasure, Jace is Phantasm, Jace Balerin. Or they could be spiritual successors to From the Vault in that they're wink, wink, nudge, nudge $20, but you could maybe sell that for a different price if you wanted to. Who am I, the cops? Signature spellbook Jace comes out June 15th, so I would expect to find out some cards in here maybe late May, start of June. Commander Anthologies Volume 2 comes out on June 8th, 2018, and like the last one, we'll have four previously released Commander decks in the nice fancy packaging like the last one. A pricey $165 MSRP, but for the Commander aficionados, the collectors, these are definitely a really nice pickup. Sticking on Commander, there'll be another annual Commander release this August, and they're continuing the four deck release plan. No themes were announced, and I'd expect it'll be several months until we hear anything more about them. 
Something quite new on June 22nd, 2018, Global Series Jiang Yanggu and Mu Yanling will be released in China in Chinese and in English for the rest of the world. These are two Planeswalker decks with Planeswalkers designed specifically for China. The decks are made by a team of Chinese artists, writers, and folklorists, which is an extremely cool idea. Very similar to what Portal Three Kingdoms did way back when, where it was entirely based in Chinese culture and uh, Chinese history. I really hope this idea works well and that we see global series for different cultures over the next few years, especially if they explore some of the more obscure folklore after doing the obvious big ones, Chinese folklore, Japanese folklore, etc. Finally, out of nowhere, this year's draft innovation set, the new term that's being used for supplemental draft sets like Conspiracy, Unstable, etc., was announced. Battle Bond is a set designed specifically for two-headed giant play. The mechanics will be focused on two-headed giant play, and it'll be designed specifically to be played in draft or sealed form, with 85 new cards and 254 total in the set. I'd expect a lot of Oath of the Gatewatch reprints, as Surge will guaranteed be a mechanic. Lore-wise, the set takes place on Kylim, a new plane where two-on-two combat is beloved. It's a love letter to sports and esports, apparently. I have zero clue how that's going to be tackled without being too referency, but I'm excited to see how it goes. I've enjoyed Two-Headed Giant when I've played it in the past, past both constructed and sealed, and I'll definitely look to play a few drafts of this for sure. So that's a lot of products, but remember, if you're not a collector, you probably don't need to buy the Spellbook series. If you're not a drafter, you probably don't need to buy any Battle Wand, maybe a couple of singles if you play Commander, if you're a cube or whatever. If you are a Commander fan, you probably already have most of the Commander decks or or the decks or the cards that you would want. So the Anthology, you're only buying it if you're a collector or you really want that bling factor. Remember, you don't have to buy everything, especially if it's not something you're interested in. But others might enjoy it, so let them enjoy it. So with all of that out of the way, it's time for the final story time for Rivals of Ixalan. This week's story, Wool Over Their Eyes, ties up a bunch of loose ends. We start with Huatli, who has planeswalked for the first time, or or at least the first time with the intention of sticking around for more than a few seconds, to Kaladesh. The people of Kaladesh are amazed by her armor, asking who her artificer is. I have no idea what that is, she happily replies. An Aetherborn is addressing the cl- crowd, detailing a new invention that will ease Aetherborn's dissipations as they return to the Aether cycle. Huali is overwhelmed with all of these new ideas she moments before had no knowledge of existing, but is soon as approached by Sahili, identifying immediately that she's not from the plane, but from elsewhere. The two talk about Ixalan as Sahili shows a large interest in dinosaurs, saying she could probably build one as the two happily walk back to Sahili's workshop. Angrath returns to his unnamed plane that he's been away for for so long. He returns to his blacksmith shop and finds his two daughters working away. Father, they ask. Angrath's tears softly hiss and turn to steam. Rumi, Jamira, I'm home. Vraska, freshly mind-wiped and successfully finding the sun for Bolas, returns to Ravnica and finds a note telling her to go to the meditation plane. She meets Bolas there, who prods her memories to find what she did. She journeyed upriver alone, watched Azor rampage through Araska, and claimed the immortal sun for herself, turning dozens of enemies around her to gold. All things that definitely, totally happened for real and aren't at all fake implants. Bolas is very pleased, tells her he would very much like to work with her in the future, and rewards her well. She returns to Ravnica to find a note that Gerard, the soon-to-be former Golgari guild leader, is imprisoned alone for her to do with as she wishes. She puts on a kettle, opens a book, and thinks about what she'll say to him before she turns him to stone. Jace didn't actually planeswalk away from Ixalan immediately, but rather cloaked himself in invisibility and watched the sun be taken, watched Vraska planeswalk away, telepathically communicated with Malcolm that they're safe, but they'll be gone for a while, and as everyone leaves, prepares to leave for Dominaria. Jace is extremely worried about what he'll tell the Gatewatch about where he is, what happened, who Vraska is, do they know who she is, what he'll tell Ugin if they're with him, but he can't delay any longer. He prepares to planeswalk to Gideon, focusing on him, but as he starts to planeswalk, he realizes Gideon is moving at a rapid pace, far, far too fast to be natural. Planeswalking, sounding a bit like Star Wars hyperspace jumps, is a bit tricky in that if you mistime it, you might just planeswalk into a solid object and that's the end of you. With extreme focus to match the speed of the object Gideon's on, he finally walks and successfully lands on a wooden machine, presumably the weather light, landing in something slightly gooey. My money's on him squishing squee, personally, and finds a group of people staring at him. Gideon appears from a nearby door, 
eyes wide, but as he runs to hug him, an older woman in her 70s in red robes and braided hair steps in his way and asks, who's the bookworm? Finally, back on Ixalan, Emperor Apatzek of the Sun Empire claims the Golden City. The merfolk hadn't even tried to take the city as per Huatli's request, and the pirates and vampires had both left, allowing him a very easy conquer. With the power remaining in Orozca, Apatzek declares a new age of conquest for the Sun Empire. Ixalan is theirs, and Torazon, the vampire's continent, is next. So that's going to wrap it up for story time for Rivals of Ixalan. We're going to say goodbye to story time for a few weeks until we start getting some Dominaria story time, or maybe we'll get some M25 nostalgia stories. Who knows? But let me know what you thought of the Rivals of Ixalan story overall. Let me know what you thought of these new product announcements. Which one are, are you excited about for? Uh, what are your predictions for them, etc.? Let me know in the comments down below. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, you can find me on Twitter at the Manalik. That's L-E-E-K, like the vegetable, not the card. You can find me at facebook.com slash Manalik, twitch.tv slash Manalik, and patreon.com slash Manalik. If you like the content, click uh, that like button. Click subscribe if you want to see more and you haven't already. And if you do have questions, comments, or suggestions, let me know. Otherwise, see you all next time.